Scott Rock's Alley back here on the program. RFA 43 coming up. Boston Salomon here. It's September 9th. First Bank Center in Brewfield, Colorado. So right down the street from him in uh, Pueblo. Uh, you know, I just saw a report. Um, Ryan Bevin said over to me, you, number two biggest upset of all time in MMA was your last fight against the Hugo Vienna. You were 20 to 1, 20, 20, 2 0 to 1, 20 to 1 underdog. And that's posted at Five Dimes, who obviously works with us here at MMA Oddsbreaker. So Nick Kalik has helped set that line. What the hell, man? Like, that's retarded. The biggest upset, of course, I commentated back in Pride 33 was uh, Sogoju versus uh, Nog. And Sogoju obviously won that fight. I think he was like a, a 35 to 1 underdog and wins that fight by knockout in the first round. So you, it, and it wasn't like uh, you walked in there, caught him by surprise, and put him down. You beat the living crap out of him for three rounds. Like you beat him up for three about rounds. That. There was some. He got he got you a little bit. He did get you a little bit in the yeah. second round. He kind of came back a little bit, but not really. It was it was kind of close. He licked you a little bit. You locked, licked him a lot more. You know, you, you threw a lot more cracks during the second round. But you you took a lot of hits too in the third round. You kind of faded the last forty five seconds, but you came out strong and heavy early. Beat him up through the entire round. In the first round, there was no there was no it wasn't even close. Like it wasn't like he wasn't even ready ready to go yet. It looked like Hugo really. Th- you know, he thought like the the odds makers thought. This is an easy fight. You just got cut from the UFC. You're not you're not doing well at the UFC, but you're a fan favorite. Now all of a sudden you got an easy ride against Zach Ryle. Let's go ahead and take this out. He came out there like, oh, it's an easy ride. And he's like, oh, now I'm gonna fight, and just couldn't catch you. He just couldn't catch it all. What did it feel like when you were in there? What was there was something going on supernatural? Were you, were you just like, this is the fight that I peaked the best for? Like, what made that fight be the number two, you know, best best upset of all time? I fought like I should. I. I did me, and that's when I when I have a smile on my face. I I don't even know how to explain it. It's it brings out the best of me. So when I even when even training, I'm always smi- I'm, I have a smile on my face 24 seven. Unless I'm in a bad mood, of course. But yeah, as long as I have a smile on my face, I I know I'm gonna win. I know I'm winning as long as I got that smile. It's like you and uh, you and uh, uh, Sam Sam Alvey, smiling Sam Alvey, the two guys that every time I talk to you, you're always smiling, you're always happy. You're always ready to go. You're always good to go. It's 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 just strange, man. It's funny that you don't, you don't get grumpier as it gets closer to the fight. You kind of get happier, you know, which is okay. a, which is a little weird for most fighters. Most guys are a little, <laughs> a little grumpy, kind of falling down a little bit. So, I, you know, your record is let, let's be honest, your record is shit. Okay, you were oh. three and three before the Hugo fight. You're five hundred, and you obviously popped off and fought like you said the way you're supposed to fight. And now you're four and three. But you're fighting. You, you've got a lot more fights. Seven, seven fights. That's a lot. That's a lot more fights in this, at the early stage of your career. Just like Boston Salmon is. He's he's only got five fights. Unfortunately, though, for you, he's undefeated. More than likely, yeah. I haven't checked yet with uh, with Five Dimes and Nick Kalikas what their odds are going to be on this fight. But more than likely, you're going to be the underdog coming into this fight as well, which obviously bodes you well. You do very well in the underdog. We saw it the last fight. Um, what's going to happen with Boston? How do you how do you see him as a fighter when you look at tape on him? He's well-rounded. He's quick. He obviously hits hard because he's putting every, everybody to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm, against me, I think it's going to be a great fight. We'll, we'll see how he handles pressure and all that. I haven't seen him go backwards yet. And we'll see if he's good on the ground, see how that works, and see if he can outpunch me, see if that happens. And with his 5-0, and he's had four uh, KO, TKOs and one decision. His only decision victory was uh, RFA 26. Um, back against uh, Danny uh, uh, Menius. It, it was it was a good fight, um, but you're right. You got to wonder how he's going to do with the pressure. You got to wonder how he's, what's going to happen with him as, as things get hot and heavy. Look, your victories, your three submissions and one decision is how is how you're winning. So it's it's odd with the pressure you put on people that you end up getting more submissions than you do knockouts. There seems to be a lot of guys with that kind of pressure they tend to crack and fall apart and they get TKO just because they can't maintain it. You pressure guys out and end up getting submissions on them. Is there a specific reason that you found during training why that works for you better than, than the KO that, that most guys get? I, I take what people give me. And if they give me their head to choke them or even to knock them out, I'm just going to take it. It's like I've always been from day one. I'm going to end it as soon as I can. It's how you make more money. The less time you're in the ring, the more money you make. Is, is how, how's it work? <laughs> so let's talk about this training camp. Every fighter now, because the way the sport is increasing, it used to be every year it'd be something different. Now it's every six months. What do you see? What do you have to adjust every every camp? For this camp, a little something gets tweaked to get better for the for the for the next fight. 
because each fighter is different, obviously. So for this camp, what did you tweak? What did you change a little bit to get ready for Boston? Mainly cardio, because that's always been a downer for me, and speed, cardio and speed. Oh My wow! Strength, I've always felt strong, so I know I got I got I got to outspeed them. What did you do for your speed training? Was it was it running training with parachute? Were you doing you know uh, heavyweight explosive you know throw buys or what were you doing for your speed training? All of that, honestly. So the heavier weights and then the bursting, of course, with body weight. So it's getting a little bit of everything. The bands, bag work, of course, which is always there, regular boxing. And it's kicking drills, taekwondo, all that, Muay, Muay Thai. Did you find it hard to find training partners to help mimic Boston Salmon's style when you're in, getting ready for this fight? Mm, not really. I I don't look at it that way. When I, when I... When I prepare myself, it's more, it's, it's all in my head. Okay. So I, it's more imagery that I have. So it doesn't really matter who I spar. I don't, I don't grow accustomed to it until I think about it. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's Zach Rowley. He's getting ready to fight Boston Salomon coming up here September 9th, uh, first bank center, Broomfield, RFA 43. Check it out if you can. It's going to be a great fight. This, I'm super excited to see this fight. Now I wasn't so excited to see the Hugo fight because I was like everybody else. 21 underdog, he's 3-3, three and three. like, who really cares? Like, good for Hugo, he's going to get right in. So I kind of went to the bathroom and checked out during that fight <laughs> and come back, I'm like, holy crap. Like, I, I, didn't, I really checked out whole first round, whole second round, come back in and see you whooping up on him in the third round. I'm like, oh, he must be coming from behind. Then you get the victory. I'm like, hold on, let me, let me stop the DVR and rewind. Let me double check and see what happened. Watch the whole fight then from front to, front to end. It was like, holy crap, he beat him up. Like, he beat him up the whole time. So <laughs> now I'm excited about this fight because I actually think this fight's actually a better matchup than Hugo was. Okay. This is a better fight for you than Hugo even was. And and even though someone's got a five and zero record versus I think Hugo was eight and three or 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 eight and two when you fought him. He wasn't he? Or something like that. Something strange. It was like it was a it was a decent record. It was a really good record and he and he smashed him. I think Salman's actually the better the better matchup, even though that uh, uh you would think uh Hugo would have been because coming off of two losses, still very talented. Very talented. But I think Boston is the better matchup for you and I'll, I can't wait to see what happens. Oh yeah, I guess I'm. I'm pumped. I've been. I actually have a full training camp, so I feel great. I haven't had one in over a year, so it feels great. Nice. All right, Zach. We'll talk to you soon, man. Good luck with the rest of your training camp. We'll talk after. All right. Awesome. Thank you.